typical championship game, man. We knew uh, we were going to be in for a dog fight, and that's just not cliche. We knew there were going to be some high highs and some low lows. Um, I was just extremely disappointed in our execution in the first half, and I can't say publicly what I told the guys in the locker room, but we just had to do a better job of executing. And hats off to Norfolk. They did some things to kind of uh, put us on our heels a little bit, but that's what we do. We execute, man. And I told them our lack of execution created run out opportunities and transition points for them. Instead of them having to manufacture points against our five on five, five base defense. In the second half, I thought Jordan Perkins did a phenomenal job of getting us started. You know, they were doubling Sean and you know, that's nothing new for us. We're accustomed to that. Um, he, he just needed to be a little more patient. And we just needed to make some shots. And we weren't making shots early and such is life. But we had to manufacture points and get them out in transition. And I thought once we got in open floor and manufactured some points in transition, the game changed a little bit. And we put game pressure on them. Questions? It definitely did. You know, I was like, look, ain't no need to sit over here and be cute. Let's, let's go out there. I was going to go out there and the wife beat him, but they told me I couldn't have that. But no, nah, man, it was it won't no need to sit over there and be cute. Myself nor these players. Like, this was do or die. And I told them as, as a man, and they don't understand this just yet, but as a man, it, you don't want to look back on your life and live with regrets. That's one of the worst things a man could do. It's either results or regrets. And I challenged them in those 20 minutes. Um, I can't say exactly what I said to them in, in that locker room, but they responded. And as young men, that's what young men are supposed to do. Because you got so many big baskets and big moments with so many different guys. It's how, how big is your team, your contribution to all up and down the lineup? They're not been pouring, but yeah. they're still here. Or that's what it takes, man. It, it, you know, that's what I know it's corny. I know it's a dated acronym of, you know, together everyone achieves more. But sometimes he ain't going to have it and I got to step up. And sometimes he's not going to have and the next man got to step up. And that's what we dare for. That's what we drill for. That's what we practice every day for, to be there when your brother is down and lift his spirits. And hopefully he can get himself together over that two, three minute duration and he can come back with how he is. The most difficult thing to do in this game is, is control your shot. You know, you can just shoot it, but you'll know if it's going in or not. A lot of times this generation allow their shot to dictate and you know, how they're going to play the rest of the game. That shouldn't stop you from defending, diving on the floor, whatever. Just leave it all out there on the floor, man. And these two young men up here beside me, they did a great job of leading us. In addition to uh, Perkins, I know you scored five points at 12 months to run. You make a little subtle change to talk about it. When you put uh, 20 off the ball and get five, and you got a couple of baskets, they talk about that, that change. Strategy. They went boxing one. And, um, that can jam a lot of people up because it's, it's, it's an anomaly. Like, you don't see it on this level a lot. Fortunately, I started my career uh, as a middle school coach. <coughs> so <laughs> it's normally one really good dude out there and you boxing one of them. And so I've learned how to play against that, that defense. Um, it's not anything someone is going to throw that we probably haven't seen. So that's the adjustment that we made. And I told this guy to my left, look, you're going to get open shots and open layups. Period. You just got to make him. I think he made a jumper, then got fouled, and then he got two dunks, if I'm not mistaken. But it made him come out of that. And um, we made the adjustment and put Juju in for, for Jordan. He's a better shooter. And um, didn't want to give him ball handling responsibilities as much. Coach, where I was before I got here, like I didn't see it. And then being able to be under him, him coaching me and helping me to get to this point and the team get to this point, uh, I can't say enough about it. Like, it's just blessings. Sean, I saw uh, some tears coming down at the, at the end of the game. Yeah, I caught you. Um, <laughs> just talk about this championship uh, for you guys. You know, two and two years for you there. And just, you know, talk about, you know, what's it been like. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I got a little emotional. But um, I'm just I'm just thankful that we all came to, came to um, go to war together. My bros was with me. My um, coach right here was with me. Um, I feel like he had, he had my best interest at heart, like from day one. And I'm appreciative of that. And I'm a, most of all, I'm just thankful just for another opportunity to be able to, you know, do this at a D1 level. So, man, it's just a lot of blessings at one time. And I'm just grateful. I'm just thankful that we was able to get it done for the third year in a row. Is there a <clears throat> 
know this term has been about the adjustments you've made that you may not be in the record season, something different than you did against Wolf of the Yeah, we knew uh, 34 was um, to finish from the field. We, we knew like we knew he's a big physical guard and he likes to get downhill but so the adjustment we made instead of putting our point guard on him we put this guy on him and in Jabri you know they could meet him at the point of physicality and then contest at the rim and he was two for ten for that um, and I thought we did a wonderful job their shooters um, 35 and 14 like Nick Thomas he didn't score and Jameson didn't score. And they killed us. Like, that's, those are the two leading scorers. I just thought if we could defend the three-point line, then we would be OK. Because when they erupt, they can go on a 9-0 run in one minute, just like that, both of them. And I said, those guys can't beat us. We got to make other people beat us. And they locked into the game plan and did a wonderful job contesting at the rim. I thought in the second half, him contesting at the rim, it, it kind of put everybody else back on their heels. It's like, I'm not going in there because that guy's going to get it. And we cut off the passing lanes as, as well. And we were able to manufacture points and transition. So that was the one adjustment we made. No, it's, it's, it, it, this is what we do it for, man. It's, it's, it's unreal how you prepare and you stress out. And, um, you know, I told, I told Roy Williams, I was like, he, he gave me a call two weeks ago. He was like, man, I'm just calling to wish you the best as, as you approach your tournament. And I was like, I wish I could do it like you. You know, just get the best players in the country, win 18 games, and don't have to win your tournament. I don't know if there's a more stressful job in the country, uh, with all due respect to everyone else and their vocation, than being a head coach for two hours. Um, that's, these kids drive you crazy. I tell them every day I'm playing the Powerball, and the moment I don't show up, you, that's the day you know I hit. I, I'm not even announcing, I'm not coming in. They just gonna say, where is coach at? And I'm gonna be somewhere with this guy in Hawaii on the island, Drinking Kool-Aid, eating popsicles with $98 million in the bank. Because I can't, I can't do this forever, man. These kids will drive you crazy. But this is what makes it gratifying. Um, you try to push and squeeze all the juice out the orange and get them to believe in themselves. Because a lot of times they can't see it in themselves. And that's the challenging part. But I'm, I'm thankful that they believed in themselves this week. I don't know if this played a major part, but after the A&T game, on the road the, at the last regular season game. We were horrible. Like, we were pathetic. It was embarrassing. I was embarrassing the coach in that game, and I didn't know why. I thought it was the 10-day layoff. We didn't have energy. We didn't have effort. We got blown out. And one of the most unique things happened. A former player of mine, David Best, who I happened to coach in high school since he was 12, 13 years old, he came into the locker room after the game. And he said, Coach, I need to talk to him. This is a kid who wouldn't do a book report in front of a class. So his public speaking, he was never that guy. So I was like, what are you going to say? He said, I just need to talk to him. And he got up in front of them. And he's the Washington Wizards security guard now, along with John Wall's security guard. And he just blasted him. Like, look, he challenged him. I, don't, I can't say exactly what he said to everybody. It, was, it wasn't PG. It wasn't PG-13. But he went straight at him, and he played for me at North Carolina Central. He challenged those guys. And I left there saying, good gracious, I, I probably needed to calm them down. And my assistant said, no, nah, they need to hear that from the former players because they're walking into luxury. These guys have built something for them, and the standard has become the standard. And they got to uphold the standard, and that's their obligation. And I'm just thankful for him to say what he said to them. And hopefully they can come back in two, three years and tell the next team and make my job easy. And that's what it is. It's a player's program. I tell them, this is your team. I ain't, I ain't do nothing as a coach. I ain't dunk no ball. I ain't get an AM1. I ain't do anything, man. It's these kids, and they need to enjoy all that. You know, one of the players, how stressful was it not scoring for the last four minutes of the game? Damn, I ain't know that. All that I just said, that's it. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, I mean, defense wins games anyway. So, I mean, as long as we were locked in on the defensive end and just limited them to one shot. 
that was really like one of our main focuses too. You know, they're a good team as far as like, you know, going to get it off the offensive glass. So that was one of our key things, making sure that they didn't get multiple chances at the at the at the rim at one time. So I feel like we did a pretty good job at, you know, giving them one chance. So we cleaned up well. Even though we wasn't scoring, we was stopping them from scoring too. So that helped us a lot. We have time for one more. It's everything, man. I was just, you know, I just told my athletic director and our chancellor, you know, thank you because it's when you see stuff like this happening, man. It's 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 not you. It's not me. It starts at the top, and it's everyone rowing in the right direction, in the same direction, and. We're only eight years old as a Division One institution. If that is that right, Kyle? I don't want to give out some bad stats, but I think we're like eight years old um, in terms of being a Division One institution. So we're still educating ourselves. We're still learning the process. We're still learning how do you do this? How do you do that? And obviously, basketball is a revenue sport, and it's a high-profile sport. It's like the front porch to the university. We feel like it's a social responsibility and a moral obligation for us to represent that in the right way. And we've had an athletic director, we've had a chancellor, we've had support staff believe and invest into these young men so they can have upgrades of what they currently have. And when you do that and when you invest and when you understand that, these are the results. So it's easy to say, see us cutting down the nets, but there's so many people behind the scenes in terms of compliance, in terms of what Kyle does. He does an incredible job marketing this program. Every day on Twitter or something, I'm just seeing tennis and basketball. I'm like, you know, good gracious, you know, and I know he could use some more staffers and so on and so forth, man, but it's people that's working 13, 14 hours behind the scenes that should share. Um, in this, and that's why I want everybody to come into the locker room and celebrate this, man, because it's always bigger than us. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.